Okay, this is lesson 7-5, exponential and logarithmic equations. This is where we've been building for the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and this is where we've been building for the last couple of weeks. Um, we've done exponential functions, we've graphed them, we've done logarithmic functions, we've graphed them. Now we're going to solve an equation that has one of each. So our objective is to solve exponential logarithmic equations. Important point to remember is you can use logarithms to solve exponential equations. You can use exponents to solve logarithmic equations. Why can you do that? Because they are inverses of each other. Remember that from last lesson? Okay, so let's see how it works. We got our first exponent here, and we're going to have a common base. Now it might look like 6 and 8 don't have a common base, but we can make them so they have a common base. Well, 16 is a perfect square of 2. It is, in fact, 2 to the 4th power. Bring down the 3x equals. Well, how do we change 8 to 2? Well, 8 would be 2 to the 3rd power. <coughs> now, here's the important point. If we have two bases, that are the same, their exponents must be equal. Say it again. If the bases are the same, the exponents must be equal. Which means, let's simplify that exponent right there on the left, to 12x, 4 times 3, equals 3. Divide by 12, and we have x is equal to 1 quarter. If the bases are equal, the exponents must be equal. Let's try it again. So, first thing we have to do when we look at the problem is decide, <laughs> is there a way to make the two bases equal? Well, 27 and 81 both have roots of 3. 27 is 3 to the third power. Bring down the 3x that was already there. Equals 81. Is 3 to the fourth power. Now that the bases are equal, we can set the exponents equal. 3 times 3, that's 9x is equal to 4. Divide both sides by 9, and we get x is equal to 4 over 9. Okay. So if the bases are equal, set the exponents equal to each other. Now the next one. When the bases are not the same, you can solve an exponential equation by taking the logarithms of each side. So if m and n are positive and m is equal to n, then the log of n, m equals the log of n. So basically that's the same. If I have two things that are equal to each other, I can take the logarithm of both sides and still have an equivalent equation. Let's see how it works. <laughs> so this is primarily, primarily where we're going to be using logarithms is when we have different bases. There's no way to simplify 15 and 285 to have the same base. So basically what I want to do is I want to now take the logarithm of each side. So my new equation becomes log 15 to the 3x equals log 285. Now I can use any base I want here, but why make life difficult for yourself? Keep it easy, keep it base 10 log. <coughs> now, let's simplify this term. Remember our goal, as always, is to get x by itself. So how do I do that? Well, we can use the power rule and send the exponent over to the left. So this becomes 3x times log of 15 is equal to log of 285. Now, all of these are numbers. So in order to clear everything out from x, all I have to do is divide by 3 log 15. Divide both sides by 3 log 15. That, that cancels that. Log 15 cancels log 15. Now it's just a matter of crunching numbers 
on my calculator. So log of 285 is going to be about 2.45. 3 log 15 is going to be about 3.53. And divide 2.45 by 3.53. And my answer is going to be about 0.69. Okay, you get close to this, so 0 0.7, 0 0.68, any of those will be fine. Just a little rounding it. Let's try that again. So for this problem, we're going to do the same thing. Okay. No way to simplify 130 to a base of 5. If it was 125, this would be very easy for us. <coughs> but unfortunately, it's not. So what we're going to have to do take a log of both sides. Five to the two x equals log one thirty. Okay. Use the power rule again. The power rule sends the two x over to the front. Two x log five will be equal to log one thirty. Divide both sides by two log five. Right. The twos cancel, the log fives cancel. I'm left with x <coughs> log of 130. So my calculator is about 2.11 over 2 log 5 is about 1.39. And so we have 2.11 divided by 1.39. And we get my answer to be about 1.2. Again, <coughs> excuse me. And again, anything close to that is fine. Just a little rounding error. Okay. So both of those problems, we had a problem with a variable in the exponent. Variable in the exponent. Okay. Variable in the exponent. We can't get. We can't get the basis to be the same. So this is how we solve it with a logarithm. Take a logarithm of both sides. The opposite happens when we have an equation that has a logarithm inside of it. So what we do here is we use our exponential form. We change this logarithm to something with an exponent. So the way I can rewrite this is my base, which there's nothing there, that means base 10 to the second power, because remember the answer to the logarithm is x going, equals this stuff right here, 4x minus 3. Now, I have an equation that's very easy to solve. 10 squared is 100, 4x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides, we get 103 equals 4x, divide by 4, and x is going to be equal to 25, 75. Okay. <coughs> Here's the important part, getting to this equation. If you can get there, you'll be all set. Let's try another. Okay. We're going to set this one up exactly the same way. We have a logarithm in my equation. So in order to clear it, in order to get x by itself, we'll change this to exponential form. Again, there's no log right there which means base 10. So that means 10 to the negative 1 power equals 3 minus 2 x. 10 to the negative 1 power is 1 over 10. I subtract 3 from both sides. 1 one tenth minus three is going to equal. I'll change it to decimal. Negative two point nine. Right, one tenth is the same thing as point one. <coughs> Equals negative two x divided by negative two to give me my answer of x is equal to. 
Both of these two problems have one thing in common. They both only had one logarithm. The problems get slightly more complicated when there are more than one. So let's do one problem like that. Notice we have two logarithms. So the first thing we have to do is we have to combine them into one. We saw from last lesson that if you see a plus in between two logarithms, it means multiply these two things together. So when we do that, our new logarithm becomes log of x minus 3 times x equals 1. Now let's multiply these together, not forgetting the FOIL dx. Multiply it by both. x squared minus 3x equals 1. <coughs> now that all the logs are combined, now that all the logs are combined, we can change this to exponential form. So let's do that. No base again, of course, means that we have a base 10. So that would be x squared minus 3x is equal to 10 to the first, which is, of course, just 10. Now I see a squared term here, which means I have a quadratic. So to solve a quadratic, we must set it equal to 0. Subtracting 10 from both sides gives me x squared minus 3x minus 10 equal to 0. <coughs> now I want the factors of 10 that subtract to 3. So the factors of 10 that subtract to 3 are going to be 5 and 2. So this tells me that the 5 is negative, so my answer will be x minus 5 times x plus 2 is equal to 0. Using the zero power, or sorry, using the multiplication property of zero, we set both of these pieces equal to zero, and we get x minus five equals zero, x plus two equals zero. So my answer is x equals to five, and x equals to negative two. Now only one of these answers is right. So we must plug them both back in, back in, to the original equation and see if we have an extraneous solution. <laughs> so again, my two answers were x equals 5, x equals negative 2, and it's easy to tell. Basically all we have to do is look to see if either one of these are going to give us a negative logarithm. 5 goes right in to both, no problem, but as soon as we put negative 2 here, this would give us a log of negative 5, which we cannot do. This is a log of negative 2. We can't do that either. So negative 2 is out. My answer becomes x is equal to 5.